I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. My wife first read the book six years ago, and it was an English children's story called Alias Madame Doubtfire by Anne Fine. And she just read it. Someone, had, I think uh, an agent at CAA sent it to her saying, I think, look at this book. And she thought it'd be a wonderful, she just thought it'd be a great idea for me to play that character. I mean, just the comedy potential, so that was incredible. I liked the idea that a man would have to play a woman and do it well enough to pass. I looked at things at that point more in terms of the range that it would require of Robin as an actor. And I figured that, you know, we could make the rest work around that. I mean, I, I was just purely interested in the idea of Robin playing this woman more than anything. She basically nurtured this thing through all the different levels, you know, a couple of different writers, you know, each time it's, it was improving. Then they asked if Chris could have a crack at it. And he had some ideas met with us and he said, those sound interesting. And then he, you know, it's one thing to have the pitch. It's another thing to actually see it fulfilled. Set. Set. And action. There were several drafts of the script before I got involved. And I read the script and it was, there. It was good. I mean, I, I never want to get into a situation where I'm negating the other writers' contributions because the other writers contributed a great deal, especially to me wanting to get involved with the picture. But I felt that the film at that point lacked a real good sense of humor. It didn't have a lot of heart. And uh, the biggest problem was Daniel Hillard and Miranda got back together at the end of the picture. We really didn't want to take it away from what we feel is the reality in the world and in the country in terms of divorcing families and what ultimately happens. And, you know, we didn't want to make a Cinderella kind of story. I think all great comedy, really, you need to have a good, solid, almost, uh, uh, solid, almost realistic basis. And you can play off of that. So you, the fact you have Robin Williams dressed as a 65-year-old woman trying to win his family back is, is, to me, the makings of a great comedy. Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to another review? There's another Patreon review for Johnny, who is very generous enough for his Patreon pledge. Uh, if anyone's ever interested in joining me on Patreon or sending out a PayPal request for review or topic, whatever, uh, the links are down below. But the review for today is Mrs. Dalfire, which... I had seen this when I was a kid and enjoyed. And then when I was in my teens, I'm like, oh, I'm not sure because it's a guy in women's clothes, the whole shtick. And maybe because watching my teens, there were also films like Big Mama's House who came out in the 2000s after this, which I'm not a fan of those movies, still not a fan of those. Norbit, which is god awful. And so I guess for some reasons, like, uh, you know, but Mrs. Doubtfire is a much better movie than those. To this movie, Robert Williams, he did a fantastic job. You watch it again, you really see the heart on its sleeve. Uh, he brought a good soul to the character, not only of the father character, but even to Mrs. Doubtfire herself. And yeah, this plot, you could easily work this as a plot of a horror movie. The guy who gets divorced from his wife, played by Sally Field. And she mostly has custody of the kids, but he wants to see them on a daily basis. 
the mom, Sally Field, has a an ad for a nanny. He gets his brother, played by Harvey Firestein, to dress him up and put makeup as his old woman, Mrs. Dalfire. Gets the job and becomes the, the nanny for the kids. <clears throat> and there are even trailers on YouTube that edit it as if it's a horror movie. But I thought Chris Columbus, the director, which I think he did a much better job here with Robin Williams than Bicentennial Man, which I reviewed or ranted on. If you're a fan of that film, that's cool. I'm still not a fan of Bicentennial Man. If you want to know why, feel free to watch that review, which, which should be uh, before this. Or after, yeah, before this. I'm just, this one I think did the humor mixed in with emotion a lot better a lot more genuine not as emotionally manipulative at least in my opinion and it was cool for example to have Robin Williams be a voiceover artist at the scene, like he would do with Aladdin and he's doing cartoon voices of these two characters on screen and granted the cartoon he's doing you have a character who smokes a cigarette I'm going in 1993, I don't think they'd have a cartoon of this Tom and Jerry type type of cartoon, Sylvester and Twitty type of cartoon, just have a character smoking a cigarette. Even 1993, I don't think they would do that. I mean, maybe if it was a Who Framed Roger Rabbit, like the baby Herman smoking a cigar, maybe that type of movie, but this doesn't seem like it was that, so. But I mean, it's, I went along with it. It was there just so Robin Williams' character would be like, hey, this is wrong. This is wrong for kids. Come on, what are you doing? And the guy's like, come on. This isn't an Oprah Winfrey special. And then Robin Williams like, did I got to do what I got to do? That's not how he says, but he's saying it like Gandhi. And this one I mean, is a fairly funny movie and it is to this day. I mean, when he tells the guy off, he's like, in the words of Porky Pig, p -p 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 piss off, Lou. Like Robin Williams, like I say, he's very genuine and natural in this movie. Maybe that's not fair of Bicentennial Man because he's playing a robot. But it's just, again, I thought the humor did not work in that film, but it did work in this film. And it's the same director. But yeah, the it does touch on an issue of divorce and... There's a point where I really dislike the Sally Field character, but at least the movie does address that, where there's a moment between her and Mrs. Doubtfire, and Sally Field mentions about how when we were together, I did not like the person that I was. I didn't like who I was when I was with them. I turned to this horrible person. So I like that the movie at least addresses that. Because at the very beginning, like the first 20 minutes, I just fucking hate Sally Field's character. But the fact that they bring it up, it's like, oh, well, that's part of the point. So the script did a, a better than usual job compared to other scripts, at least addressing that, bringing that up. The three kids did a good job. The youngest one, I know she was in a film called Matilda. Which is actually another one of Johnny's requests, which I'll get to. Uh, Mara Wilson, which I think after Matilda, well, she did that film, A Simple Wish. Uh, after a couple other movies, she retired. Which is too bad. She was a good child actress. I'll mention that when I talk about Matilda, but she did a good job. The other kids did a good job. Harvey Firestein, who I just heard in Mulan, which is a movie I reviewed recently. Um, and then he was also at Independence Day. He had some early scenes with Jeff Goldblum, at least in the first half of the movie. I don't think he's with us anymore, sad to say. I could be wrong on that, but good character actor. And he, he was fun as the brother. Like he's talking to Ma, and he's like, well, his marriage is ending. And Robin was like, my marriage is not ending. It's just on a hiatus. And then... He's talking on the phone, and Harvey Firestein is talking to his boyfriend, and he's like, "Bitch, well, no, mom, I'm not talking to you. I was talking to the dog." <laughs> and Ron Williams, you very likable character. He's very sweet with his kids. His son blames himself for the divorce, and I like Ron Williams. Like, no, it's not your fault. Okay, it's none of you guys' fault. You know, this stuff happens. So they really did a good job establishing the, like I said, the. Considering what 
you could deem as a very creepy thing he's going to do, they, they do establish fairly well this is a, a loving dad. And sadly, that's what happens. Sometimes, you know, they love their kids, but marriages just don't work out. At least it, but it still doesn't lose the fact that it's a comedy. Like when he's talking to this lady who's going to be his social worker. And she's like, well, what do you do for jobs? And you have the montage. Where he's like, I do voices. And he does the montage like, Nancy and I are still looking for the other half of my head. Uh, that's a very fun scene. Or when Sally Field has the ad for the housekeeper and he's like, I'm going to call in some fake ones just to get her on edge to be desperate. So like he calls one, he does a voice of, so uh, are your kids behaved or do they need a few light slaps? Another one is, Oh, you have a boy. I don't work with males because I used to be one. <laughs> or another one where it's like, I am Job. What is your name? I am Job. <laughs> and Ron Williams did that much better than me. That's why it's... I'll review comedies, but it's hard to review a comedy because it's hard to replicate the dialogue, the energy that Robin Williams just had that infectious energy and was just insane with ad-libbing. Like you watch interviews with him and he ad-libs like a faster than a speeding bullet, faster than the flash. I mean, he's just so quick with delivering monologues out of his head and out of his ass. And just, he had such pure energy that is like you could tell this guy had a good heart to him. And it's so sad that we lost him. And I wish he was still with us today. And watch this again. It's very sad, but great to see Robin Williams, you know, doing what he does best and making people laugh. And he works well with the kids. He does well as Mrs. Darfire. You know, the scene where he's baiting, you know, doing the best he can. He burns his fake breasts. Is like, man, cooking and I'm now getting hot flashes. Or someone tries to take his purse. He's like, back off, asshole, and slams the guy. One of the funnier, one of the ones that made me laugh is that the, the counselor is at his place and he has to pretend to be both Mrs. Doubtfire and himself at the same time. And so his ma the mask has flown off and a truck runs over it. And just the way he's like, oh shit. <laughs> and even the bit like he has a wig and he's by the door and then she calls her something. He's like, oh, you T. And then just the way the wig just fucking stays there but he keeps going that kind of physical comedy it, it did make me laugh I don't know if it's the timing or or what but it stuff like that did make me a chuckle and so it was fun to watch this again and I always forget that Pierce Brosnan is in this Pierce Brosnan is in this as he's not really a villain that was an interesting thing they they did they didn't really play him off as a villainous evil scheming guy he wasn't really that bad of a guy i mean he was in you tell he had the hots for sally field but he wasn't really doing anything that bad which is interesting because we would typically yeah he's, he's the bad guy but they didn't go that route i mean there's even a bit where someone's asking him about the kids and he's like, oh, the, the kids are great. The kids are wonderful. And this is like to a buddy of his. So in a, another movie, he'd just be, oh, those kids, those kids are just pieces of shit. No, he doesn't do that. So again, interesting that Pierce Bros's character is not really that awful of a guy. So in a way, when Pierce, when Robin Williams is getting so pissed at this guy, it's like, well, Robin Pierce isn't really doing anything wrong. It just goes that, yeah, her husband probably was a loser. 
So, I mean, that's probably like the worst thing Pierce does. But is it? I just did find it interesting watching the end that they didn't make him the stereotypical villainous guy. So it made it less uh, cliche, so to speak. The finale. Is that that was bad? I it just wasn't. In a weird way, it was my least favorite part of the movie. I don't know why. It's when he's at the restaurant, he's got to go back and forth to this guy he's meeting with for a job to host this possible kid's show, and then going back to Mrs. Dalfire and going back and forth. Again, I didn't find it bad. I didn't find it awful. Just for some reason, I didn't find it as funny as I'm sure the movie wanted it to be. I did. I, I don't know why that is. Again, just for some reason, even back in the day, I'm like, eh, kind of, kind of a whimper of a finale. I did. I I I don't know why. I can't really put in the words. Just a, a feeling I had. But he, you know, saves Pierce Brosnan who's choking. Does the right thing. And because he gets found out, of course, people are pissed at him. He does get the kid show. And then Sally Field kind of comes around. And they don't, out of the blue, go, we're going to get back together. They don't go that route because I think for the for the better, because it would be disingenuous. Granted, this is not a documentary. It's not supposed to be real. But it just would pop out of left field and be like, no, that's not what would happen. But at least he gets to see their kids and maybe the two of them will at least get along as friends. And Robin did learn a bit as Mrs. Dalfire, the character, about helping out around the house and being a little bit more responsible. They go into the whole... And again, another movie would be like, oh, the marriage is perfectly fixed. They don't go into that. Which again is more real and like I say it's not supposed to be a documentary or anything but it's more genuine maybe that's the better word it's more genuine of an ending and yeah I know there's talks of a sequel I you didn't need a sequel because the story already has been told the whole reason he did Mrs. Doubtfire was to see his kids and now he can see his kids there is no more story to tell and then maybe that's why I thought the years Robert Williams was like, oh, they don't have the script, they don't have the script. Because there is no script for Mrs. Doubtfire 2. The story has ended. So as much as I love Robin, no, we did not need a Mrs. Doubtfire 2. Yeah, there's no other story to tell. So yeah, the, the flick, I like some of the songs, the soundtrack, like Dude Looks Like a Lady by Aerosmith. That was a fun little montage. The quite a few bits that are funny. The actors do their jobs well. Robert Williams, it's heartfelt. I mean, the moment where he realizes Sally Field doesn't love him anymore near the beginning of the film, you just see the heartbreak of Robert Williams' face. And he was a really good actor. I mean, he was a great comedian, but he was a really good actor too. That's the thing. He was a really good actor. And uh, yeah, with that said enjoyable movie well worth a look again if you haven't seen it in a while rest in peace Robin Williams I mean, my only issue is the, the third act I don't know for some reason kind of a whimper I just didn't find it that hilarious or I don't know what it is but yeah it's fun film nice to revisit again like I said miss you Robin Williams I love a lot of his films like Toys I think is underrated Club Paradise is my personal favorite uh, what Dreams May Come, Jumanji, among others, Awakenings. Thanks for watching. Take care, and we will see you in the next video. Later.